you start whenever you want. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to a quick update on all things Matrix. We're going to talk a little bit about communities, sometimes known as groups, which are a new feature that uh, we've just added into Matrix recently. Thank you for coming to hear the word of Matrix and apologies if you've been stuck queuing outside for days or weeks. Um, first of all, obvious question, who already knows what Matrix is? Okay, that's really scary. <laughs> This is our fourth um, FOSDEM, I think, and it's kind of gone from zero people to five people to about ten people to about half the people. So th this is um, interesting, but it kind of tracks the growth of Matrix as a whole as a protocol. Um, however, that does mean that I do need to do a quick update on the kind of basics of Matrix for the 50% of people who um, are not that familiar. So apologies that this will be really boring, although I'm trying to make it less boring um, for the half of you um, who already do know what it is. So basically, Matrix, it's big, global, open network for secure, decentralized, real-time comms. So we're optimizing for real-time pub-sub with persistent semantics, and we have end-to-end -end encryption um, in there as well. And the sort of things that you play with on it are interoperable chat, obviously, interoperable VoIP. And uh, what we always say, in a desperate hope to get people to build more exciting things on Matrix, is that you could use it for communications within VR and AR, or you could use it for IoT data exchange, or any of this good stuff. Because in the end, it's just an HTTP API to let you put some JSON data. That hits your server, which then signs it, replicates it out to the other servers participating in a room, and you go and distribute it over all of the servers which have a copy of the room. So this is the fundamental thing of Matrix that is different to XMPP or IRC or SIP or any of these other communication technologies that we're building up a directed acyclic graph of messages and replicating them over all of the servers that participate. It's basically the same as Git, except rather than the um, uh, commits that are being replicated being source code, instead the nodes which you replicate are messages in a room. That's basically Matrix. Um, enjoy the next half an hour. <laughs> um, the, the mission of the project is unashamedly to create this global um, decentralized comms network um, because, let's face it, we're still not at the point where the internet has a uh, ubiquitous pub sub player. And there are a lot of options out there. There's Matrix, there's Ring, there's... First pub sub, um, there's the Whisper and PSS stuff from the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, we've been at it for a while, we're perhaps further along than um, some of the um, options out there, but the idea is nevertheless to go and provide a kind of lowest common denominator, nominator, really simple way to go and publish and subscribe arbitrary data. And unashamedly, we're going up here against the silos that people use to communicate today. We're providing an open alternative to WhatsApp or to Slack or to Telegram or any of these other kind of islands of communication and um, trying to do it in a very simple, pragmatic, standards-based approach, which in the end is just HTTP. So the idea is that any web developer who can do a put of some JSON can send a message in Matrix. Folks have probably seen this diagram before, showing different islands, people like Slack and Telegram and IRC. Could be an application like GitHub, could be a silo like Gitter, and Matrix sits in the middle um, to go and um, be this mesh. And so you've got the dark blue um, dots in the middle, which are servers, and then you have green dots, which are the um, native Matrix clients. You have the light blue dots, which are bridges through to the other. Um, uh, networks around the edge. And basically the idea is that you could use, um, have somebody on Slack talking to somebody on IRC going via Matrix without realizing that they're even using Matrix in the middle. So it is, if you will, some kind of matrix in which you can embed different silos and have a kind of substrate to connect them together. So the cool thing is that nobody owns your conversations that your um, rooms and your conversations exist on your server. They're replicated by other people, but there is no single point of control or failure by design. It rather subversively decentralizes the data by its very nature of conversation. Um, and I guess the flip side of that is that the conversations are shared equally for everybody. I guess I've already explained that you've got your native clients, your home servers, application servers, 
Identity servers are the odd ones out, which um, I talked about at last Volstem briefly. And unfortunately, we haven't made much progress on the core team for going and improving our identity situation. In Matrix, we um, shamelessly um, hijack existing identity. So if you've got an email address or a phone number or in future other identifiers, what we do is to go and map it through to a matrix ID. Um, so that if I invite somebody, I don't need to know your matrix ID. I just put in your email address and it will go and send an invite to your email and it kind of hooks you into the network. It's the opposite of, I know, XMPP with Jabber IDs on business cards with little stickers on your T-shirt. Instead, you just use the um, email address that you already have. But the current implementation is a centralized cluster, which we want to kill. Um, there has been some work in the community from Max, if Max is out here somewhere, perhaps not, um, who's written a Java implementation of a federated identity server, and we're hoping in the coming year to improve the identity situation a bit. So here's an updated view of where the actual matrix ecosystem sits today. Um, you've got the spec in the middle level, which goes and defines the HTTP API between the clients on the top and the servers on the bottom. The green stuff is made by the matrix.org core team. And we've basically got stacks on JavaScript, iOS, and Android on the client side, both at the API level and then the UI level above it. And then on the back end, you've got some um, servers. And we have our old Python twisted thing called Synapse, which is quite mature now. It's still a horrible resource hog. Apologies to anybody whose server has had all its RAM gobbled by Synapse. We have just found, actually, a major performance improvement on the, on the state resolution algorithm that chews a lot of the resources. Um, basically, there's a cache that should be being hit that turns out has never been hit. And so we're getting on. Um, hopefully, that will improve things a lot. Dendrite is our next-gen server written in Golang, which is about 80% there for phase one. Unfortunately, every time we make some progress on it, Synapse goes and explodes on matrix.org. We had a particularly splendid one over Christmas when we were feeling quite happy because we had 20% CPU headroom on the matrix.org server, which runs about 30,000 simultaneous users. So you know, we're pushing it to the limits. Um, but luckily, we got that 20% headroom, so it's going to be fine for a couple of weeks until Meltdown Inspector suddenly <laughs> appeared, at which point our headroom vanished and everything ground to a halt. So basically, Dendrite has been horribly delayed by constantly having to do performance work and maintenance work and ops work on Synapse. But we're hoping to improve that soon. Then, on the purple side, we have the community, which, and this is not drawn to scale because at this point, the community is way bigger in terms of projects than the core code base. And in terms of clients, we've got lots of really interesting ones. Um, there's Neko, which is a native Qt C++-based um, app, which if you like your Qt desktop apps, have a go. It's very usable now. It looks and feels uh, suspiciously like Telegram, which is no bad thing. You've got Quaternion, which is, again, Qt, um, except the aesthetic is much more on the kind of Xchat style or Hexchat side of the spectrum. You've got two GTK Plus and Rust projects, Fractal and Fest. Um, which are looking really interesting as people play with Rust and the GTK bindings. Um, there's an app called Thunderbird. don't know if anybody's heard of Thunderbird, uh, which has uh, Matrix as one of its um, chat transports, at least behind a flag at the moment. Uh, WeChat has got Lua scripts for it. And I think there are about 50 or 60 clients out there ranging in um, kind of sophistication to a 200-line Lua script like the WeChat one, although, honestly, it works very well, especially if you, uh, you tweak the tunings a bit all the way through to a much, much bigger full Telegram desktop app style thing. And finally, on the server side, we've got Rumor um, on the Rust side, which is sort of on hiatus whilst we go and um, get um, some of the server spec stuff sorted out, which is happening during Dendrite Dev. There's also MXHSD, also written by Mac Store in Java, which apparently is federating with Matrix Dev, which is one of the bigger rooms as of yesterday, which is exciting. It means that it's further ahead than Dendrite for that. And then many, 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 many bridges, bots, integrations, and everything else. So basically, there's a lot of stuff going on out there these days. What do you get in the spec? Uh, well, all the obvious bits. Obviously, you get conversation history. You get group messaging. You don't get one-to-one -one messaging, because we consider a one-to-one -to, -one to just be a room with two people in it. End-to-end -end encryption um, is uh, where we put a lot of effort over the last couple of years. The, the crypto level is basically great. The key management level is still a nightmare, both in terms of UX. Um, there are two big things which we have to land, one of which is cross-signing um, keys. The other, uh, actually three things, cross-signing um, keys so that if I have multiple devices and I vouch and cross-sign them with one another, you should trust all of my devices. 
Um, also, key verification. At the moment, you have to compare stupid elliptic curve um, public keys, which is, what, 32 characters, which is horrific. Um, there's a great proposal from Uhu Egg in the community, which goes and compresses it down to about four mnemonic words that will be the same for both people. So you're out of band, if you want to verify somebody's device, you phone them up and say, hello, pink zebra elastic plaster or whatever. And if they have the same four silly words on their thing, then you know it's you're talking to the right guy. And then finally, key backup. Now, this is a slightly controversial one um, because we deliberately didn't provide any way to back up keys in the initial implementation because the second you back up your keys on a server somewhere, it obviously renders them liable to somebody um, uh, trying to get them off that server. But the pra in practice, we find a lot of people install Riot on their phone, use it a lot, have a bunch of encrypted conversations, flush their phone down the toilet or throw it into the sea or whatever, and then say, oh, I've lost all of my history. So we're giving the option for people to back up their room keys on a server, but behind a PKI, um, private key, um, recovery key, effectively, which we give them when they first create their account. And we say, hey, if you do want to recover your device, take this private key and print it out and store it in your safe or whatever. And we never, ever store that on the client itself. So basically, it will give a way to recover your history in that scenario. And we hope that with those three things and a lot more UX polish, then the end-to-end -end on Riot will actually be kick-ass rather than um, academically and um, theoretically amazing and practically a bit of a pain. Ten minutes left. Interesting. <laughs> really? OK, I'm going to speed up a lot and talk about communities. <laughs> I'm going to skip how it works um, because I kind of mentioned it at the beginning. So communities, new feature. We launched uh, in November. We spent a lot of last year working on it. It's a new first class entity in Matrix. It's a new sigil. It's the plus that we can see here. So communities look like plus, name of the community, colon, the domain. And what, you, what they do is to basically define a group of users or a group of rooms. And um, the architecture is a bit interesting in that we've designed it so that it, um, they have an affinity to a given server. So they're not fully decentralized. Um, in the, if they are bridged to a, or if they hosted on a given server, then you can use them to back onto um, an existing data store like LDAP. Um, it's kind of an oracle in decentralized terms um, or Active Directory or whatever your kind of um, user data is. Um, the idea is to be an equivalent of Teams in Slack or a server in Discord. And it's something that we, everybody has been asking for for years, that they go into their matrix account. And so let's jump into my uh, right here. And I've got well, um, way too many rooms of different flavors. I've got 713 rooms there. I've got 586. Oh, you can't see it. It's a disaster. Um, let me press escape and see what happens. Come on. So I get for using PowerPoint, don't kill me. OK, so here we are. So here's my right, sorry. And we've got like 500 people conversations here. Um, we've got huge numbers of um, rooms here. And it's a mess, honestly. It's all jumbled up together. You can't find anything. So communities, um, you can actually see here on develop, live down the left-hand side, a bit like Teams and Slack. And what they allow you to do is to filter it down. So if I want to look at rooms and conversations associated with the official matrix.org team, I just go and click on it. And well, you've got 100 you know, test conversations with Andy and various people on the core team. Then a couple of important rooms here, Matrix HQ, Matrix Dev, and, and so on and so forth. And then a whole bunch of other rooms um, down here. So it may not look big, but in terms of the usability, it's going to change things enormously. This left bar isn't yet live on app. It's on the develop branch of Riot Web. But if you switch URL over to develop, you can play with it right now. You do have to turn it on in settings, though. And um, other communities I have here are like all of the people who donate to support Matrix at various levels. So I can click on linear, and it gives me the linear room, which is folks donating like one buck a month or more, um, or more to us. And a bunch of one-to-ones with folks in that community um, have polynomial. Um, sorry, it's in the wrong order. Obviously, quadratic comes before polynomial. And you see um, uh, that we've got a nice, pretty drop and drag um, on here as you go and order your um, teams in the right place. Then you've got the polynomial level. Then you've got the elliptic level. Obviously, you can shift click on these guys if you want to watch them all at the same time. And you've basically really got a powerful tool here to go and riffle shuffle your communities together. 
Now, this is very different to Discord or Slack in that you can mix it together. They are filters of different views. And so if I want to have, I know, the core team things, plus I want to have, I know, the politics community, which apparently I'm a member of. I don't remember joining it, but apparently I have. <laughs> um, then I can control click on that. And I don't know if I'm actually in any Pulse 6 rooms. Let's find out. Oh, there you go. I mean, I'm sorry, Pulse 6 guys. Apparently you're in my low priority um, bucket. But um, yeah, I am in the Pulse 6 stuff there. Now, if we go and um, uh, look at this button here, you have the index uh, uh, in more detail of the communities that you're in. So you've got um, beautiful butterflies for Pulse 6 and various bits and bobs here. If I go to the official matrix team, oh, that's not very pretty. Um, you get um, some freeform HTML um, to basically have a little landing page for the group, and then you have the directory of all the rooms which are officially part of that given community, and then you also have the people. And in this instance, it's the folks who have the misfortune of being paid to work on Matrix full time. And um, click on this, and in theory, one, oh, if I wasn't scrolled all the way down, we would be able to see it at the top. Um, the ability to like change um, the topic, set an avatar, and yeah, at the moment we just have simple HTML. And you know, it's not the most technologically complicated feature, but in terms of UX, hopefully it makes Matrix a lot less imposing. Because if you want to invite people into a given open source community, I don't like Perl 6, for instance, then um, if I go over here, click on Perl 6, then um, okay, they haven't, oh yeah, they've got a link to the website at least, which is better than nothing, and you've got, suddenly you can find you know, six rooms which are the official Pearl 6 ones, or at least the ones associated with this community, and they can just copy paste that link, or use a matrix.2 URL, which is a kind of link, um, Linkify style service, and put it on the website, and rather than dumping their users into the entire global mess of matrix, they can just say, have this nice little targeted landing thing, which points them at the rooms that they care about. Five minutes left. So this, um, hopefully, is a nice thing, which people have been asking for. Uh, what else can I tell you? That's, um, oh, the other thing I completely missed is Flare, which um, is a fun thing um, that allows you to go and put little badges on people's names. Um, if they want to advertise themselves as a member of a particular room, I won't, I'll turn back into Riot so you can see them, but you, if you're using Riot, you've probably seen them as um, little M logos for people on the core team or whatever. You might be thinking, what is Flair? Um, if you've ever seen Office Space, a seminal film of, I think, the late 1990s or early 2000s, um, features the lovely Jennifer Aniston wearing a lot of Flair in the form of badges. And flair is a horrible euphemism to make ugly badges sound a lot more sophisticated. So that's where the word flair comes from. We stole it from Reddit, who stole it from her. Um, uh, we've got some mobile implementations in dev. So if you run dev versions of Android or iOS, you can play with them. We've already got a 1,000 of them already. Limitations is that we deliberately don't have a directory. You have to discover these for a side channel or by clicking on somebody's flair. Um, and also, we don't have full push support. And uh, one of the things which has hampered um, communities development a bit has been a holy war within the team on should communities be rooms? Because they look a lot like rooms. They've got avatars, they've got arbitrary metadata, they've got members, they've got history, all this sort of thing. At the moment, they're implemented as a totally separate entity so that you can bridge them through to LDAP or whatever. But there's a kind of centralization versus decentralization argument happening there. Other stuff, oh, I've already given you a demo. Um, other stuff is widgets. Anybody played with widgets? Yes, in Matrix? Couple, couple, four, five, six. Widgets, I think, are really underrated. They're super, super cool. They allow you to embed arbitrary HTML into a room. And basically, you can turn any chat room into a dashboard. The ones we have today are things like Grafana, Jitsi, Etherpad. You can even go Google Docs and Spotify and other kind of closed things. Um, or you can put any URL you damn well like with a custom widget into a room. And the idea is that um, they, uh, in practice, they're just state events within the room. They're available on Riot on all the platforms. Um, you provision them using a manager. We provide, well, there are two out there at the moment, Modular, which is the proprietary one that Riot uses. There's also an open source one called Dimension, which is a FOSS alternative. 
Um, spec is like proposal in Google Docs, needs to be formalized. It desperately needs a tileable UI to fulfill the potential. And one of the things we want to do with them in future is to provide a means of doing paid stuff in a room. So if you wanted a Patreon alternative or a Twitch alternative, you might um, take a matrix room, chuck a live stream into it, and say, hey, I want to directly charge people to watch my thing if you're into that kind of thing. Um, that's one of the state events showing what they look like. Um, this is a trading view widget, and you can see it's backed by a URL. This URL goes via Scalar, which is the, um, the, uh, the closed um, hosting platform we have, but it can be any URL you like. And in practice, they look a bit like this. Chug, 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 chug. Where should I go? Um, what's a room of widgets? First one is not Pearl 6, tragically. Um, and oh, if I go to I know, our internal management room, this can never go wrong. Um, oh, there are some widgets here. So um, since um, Matrix's funding situation was resolved a couple of weeks ago um, by our friends at Status in the Ethereum world, we've developed an unhealthy habit of staring at um, cryptocurrency trading charts. And you can see Ethereum <laughs> swashing around over the last week. And likewise, the Status token. And these are just little bits of HTML that have been embedded in there. And it's surprisingly useful to have these things hovering over your head so that you can collaborate on a document or argue about what your Grafana graphs are doing. And at the moment, you've only got two in a row, but the idea is to basically make the whole UI here um, tileable so you can kind of um, split it up and go and embed more and more things until you yourself can have your very own Bloomberg console built on top of Matrix. Um, so there's the widgets. If you haven't played with them, please do. Um, whilst I'm in here, I'm also going to show you Neko quickly. So I mentioned Neko earlier. This is the Telegram-esque um, Qt um, client. I'm logged in here as my evil alternate user, Matthew2. And we've got Matrix Falls Dome Room, we're folks um, chatting away. Oh, God, it's so nice to be using a desktop um, native client rather than um, HTML. It's untrue. Um, scroll down, you can see Brendan saying, hi, mom. Hi, Brendan. I am your blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, Matthew always does have to rush the talk. I'm sorry. Um, let's go to Matrix HQ, but look how snappy it is. Matrix HQ has got 13,000 people in it, and there are people chatting away, people, sorry, getting trapped outside. Audio is kind of bad. That's probably my accent, and the fact I'm talking too quickly, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, basically, it's fun. Click on this, and wow, it's got a proper desktop um, photo and all this um, um, good stuff, too. So if you haven't played with Neko, give it a go. And most importantly, cropped off the left-hand side of the... Ah, really cropped off the left-hand side. How do I get out of this? Ah, help. It's almost like QT and OS X are not a perfect match. There we go. Cropped off the left-hand side here. You have communities. So Evil Matthew is a bit of a loner and is only in a few communities like the test one here. But you can see that clicking on this is the same behavior of quickly filtering it down. In fact, it filters it a lot faster than the right web. Who knew? Because QT is a little bit faster than HTML and JavaScript. So that's a bunch of stuff happening in Matrix right now. Very quickly, um, give you some quick stats and where things are at. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, oh, we've got Jitsi. We use Jitsi for video conferencing. My time is up. Um, I'm not going to show you that. Currently, about 3 million users on the matrix.org home server, of which 900,000 are native to Matrix. We've got about 5,000 servers. We're pushing 25 second, uh, messages a second in. A good thing is that we're getting more messages in than we're putting out. So there is more outside the matrix.org federation, the, uh, sorry, more outside the matrix.org server than there is um, outside it. Lots of companies building on top of it, um, which is kind of fun. Uh, growth is continuing to go, woo! Um, that's up until July. Um, so that's, yeah, so since July, we've gone from 1.6 to 2.8. So the graph, if I had time to update the stats before the talk, would be up off the top of the screen, which is kind of fun. Um, traffic is also going up too. Uh, bah, 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 bah. More servers coming on. What's next? We are now funded again. Thank you to everybody who's donated to keep us um, alive. Um, we're hiring folks um, all over the place, especially on the front end to make it suck less in terms of UX and also on Dendrite and a lot of other stuff too. Thank you very much. <laughs>